Iceland. What pops into your mind when you think about Iceland? Super rough, wild weather, wild scenery, wild nature. All the insane videos that you see are always in Iceland, so it has been on our wish list for a very, very, very long time. Because Iceland was so high on our wish list, we didn't hesitate and instantly said yes. A hundred percent good opportunity for a next level gravel adventure. So how do we end up in Iceland? Whoa, that actually has something to do with, with suspension forks. That was actually the lead of going to Iceland. Karel. Yeah, Karel. Karel was an intern at Lauf Cycling. And we were chatting on Instagram and they invited us to come to the Rift. It's a 200 km gravel race in Iceland. But uh, if you are in Iceland, why only race 200 kilometers? So we thought, okay, let's plan some adventure before the race. The only thing remaining was to buy a flight ticket, to plan some adventure, absolutely, and to have fun. I got this Unko Marti. He's a very passionate photographer and videographer, and he has been doing a lot of shoots in Iceland. So I instantly called him and I asked, okay, Marti, where should we go? And without hesitation, he said, how do you pronounce it? Landmannelaar, yeah. Landmannelaar. It's a central place in Iceland. Uh, it's very hard to reach, but the views are beautiful. What I remember very vividly about getting in the bus was that there were only hikers in the bus. So we were really the only bike riders in it. We were three guys, Wout, Noel and myself, sitting there with big smiles, not having any idea where... Well, we saw some pictures on the internet, but not really having an idea where we were going. I think we were quite a... Uh, we'd catch in the bus, but we thought, why not ride our bikes? In the highlands out there, there are a couple of hiking huts where people uh, can go from one uh, cottage to the other. So we were getting out of this, this massive bus, and on the left we see all these horses running. I don't know, like a group of 50, maybe even 80 horses. Walking to the Landman Lauger hut, we see all these tents on the left side. There was a very fierce wind going on. And in the distance, we see this beautiful hut. And then this massive black wall of lava behind the hut. And a very proud Icelandic flag standing in the middle of an empty field, which was also home to the hot pool. We unpacked our bags, we got into these dormitories with like 30 or 50 hikers from all over the world. And we walked in with our three biking suitcases. <laughs> so at the Landman Alauga hut we did three days of riding. First two were just pretty insane, like a lot of great gravel roads. And we were very flabbergasted by the Icelandic landscapes. We were just riding, having fun. We went up a hill, so I got my drone up, and then I saw like we are right in between two volcanoes. Immediately from the start, it was one like shock after one shock, and then day three just blew us away. Still, when I when I think about that ride, I think it's the, it's the best ride ever. There was a lot of hiker bike involved. We crossed rivers, so we, we had very wet and cold feet. We had a long hike bike section over a glacier. So it was, there were a lot of things that were actually quite shit. But <laughs> yeah, but right, because but the rest of the route was just so breathtaking. We were coming over this hill, it was like a pretty long climb actually. And when we were looking down, you could see like this huge river delta. Yeah, with this like super bright green mush. And the, on the ground, yeah. in contrast with the, with the snow and with the black rocks, that gave just a super super insane view. 
I think at that moment we've already been riding for about 10 hours. We knew we had about five or six hours ahead of us. Uh, we were running out of water, out of, out of food, out of food. But we had to make a decision. So we got together with the three of us and we had a talk about like, what shall we do? Because if we are going to go back, then we have to reroute everything that we've done so far. Or we're gonna march forward, see what happens, and we're just going to push through. Golden hour already started, but afterwards we found out that the golden hour takes like 10 hours in Iceland. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And in the end, we made the right decision to just push through and go for it. There was this bridge, we rode over it, and then we saw this complete landscape with endless hills in, in orange colors, with white colors, with smoke coming up from the mountains, with, with green patches, with, with snow, with the sun lighting the sides of the, of the mountain. And we saw this, this tiny little, tiny little single trail all the way until we couldn't see it anymore. It's, uh, it's absolutely best memory in the life. <laughs> but we pushed on and when we almost got to the hut, well, we could actually see the hut lying right Very there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was one enemy lying ahead of us, in front of us. It was a big ass lava field with all these. It was just, it, it, it seemed to be impenetrable. Kind of was. I think for, uh, for a hiking trail, it was already quite next level. Yeah. And we did it our, uh, with our bikes. In the end, we made it, we came onto the flat section to the, towards the hut. And you see the sun coming down. And yeah, we survived this route and we, we instantly felt that, okay, this is the best, best ride of our lives. And we arrived at the hut, took some beers, went into the hot pool. Yeah, this really is the ride of a, ride of a lifetime.